Okay, today's video is going to be on calendar activities for camp registration. So this video is really going to focus on calendar activities for summer camp, spring camp, winter camp. That can include week long camps, day camps. This video isn't going to be a deep dive on every single uh, item on a calendar activity build, but again, it's going to focus more on how do you utilize calendar activities for camp uh, week long day camp events? On the agenda, we're first going to talk about why a calendar activity versus a program. So we have two event modules and you can use either one for a summer camp. And we're going to talk about that briefly at the top of this meeting and as well as the program meeting that we have recorded as well. So we encourage you to really watch both of these trainings. And after you watch both of them, you can determine which setup is right for your organization and your camp. Please utilize the support team as well because they are there to help you decide and present them with all the information about your camp, your cost, your structure, and they can help guide you as well. Categories. Categories are very important when setting up a calendar activity. So we're going to talk about categories, how to utilize them and why they're so important. We're going to build just a very basic calendar activities camp event. We're going to talk about best practices for adding forms. Again, this isn't going to be a deep dive into form building, but there are some best practices for adding forms for camp events. We're going to talk about adding payment schedules, discounts, and then finally we're going to talk about copying events. So I like to build one event and use it as a template. So we're going to talk about really finalizing one event and then copying that event um, as our template. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is go into our demo site. Keep in mind this is a demo site. There's some test uh, events in here. There's also um, different content, but this is the double non application just as you all use it. So I'm going to go to event management. And again, first thing I'm going to talk about is my categories. So under utilities, we have the, to the middle left manage categories. Categories are very important for a few reasons. First, they allow you to kind of organize your events. And when I say organize, I mean you can organize them for you as administrators, but also for your end users or your customers. So your customers see categories in a few ways. If you go to your double knot calendar, you can sort by category. Um, you also can present users with what we call category URLs, and we'll look at those today. So before I build any calendar activity, I always build categories to accommodate them. So for example, for today, what I've done is I've built a couple 2022 summer camp categories. I like to build at least two categories for each camp. And the reason I do that is I can I can kind of have sub levels. So I can have one main category for my camp and then I can have a category per age level. So you could break this down by age level. Maybe you break it down by location, but however you want to organize your your camps how you want to present them to your customers and how you want to organize your camps on the back end administrative side for reporting purposes and for visual purposes, sorting purposes in the application. So to build a new category, you go to new category, give it a category name, admin only is if you wanted a hidden category and an image for display image if you want an image in your category. So I've just built those three categories for example's sake today, my 2022 summer camp, my age is four to six and my age is seven to ten. So we'll come back to this because we're going to take a look at what those categories can do visually for our summer camps. Next, what we're going to do is go to calendar activities. So before I go into the calendar activities, I do want to discuss kind of the difference between calendar activities and programs. Calendar activities are best used for camps where you, you know that a parent's going to come on and register their child for camp, but they're not as likely to sign up for multiple weeks of camp. If you know for a fact that your parents are going to come onto the website and they're going to register their child either for multiple days of camp or multiple weeks of camp, a program might be a better option. 
A calendar activity is a great option if you have, you know, five to 10 weeks of camp. And more likely than not, the child is going to be registered for one week, maybe two weeks. You still have the option to register for multiple calendar activities, but interface wise, a program might be better. There's really some intricacies here, and that's why we encourage you to watch both of these videos. Um, but again, today's going to focus really on the calendar activity side. So let's go to new calendar activity. And again, not going to get into every single ounce of information on this page because that would be a different training. And this is really going to focus on the important parts for setting up a, a camp registration. So description here, this this is going to be our individual camp. So when I say that, that can be a week of camp. That can be um, a day of camp, whatever you're collecting that registration for. So for this example, we're going to build a week long summer camp. So I'm going to say. Summer camp week one ages, you know, I'll say parenthetically ages four to six. Then what I'm going to do is set my dates. Now there is a couple important functions here. So say I have a week long camp out in July. So I'm going to say this camp is from the 11th of July um, until the following Friday, which is the 15th. And it's you know this camp they got to drop off their kids at 8 a.m. and I want them picked up by 3 p.m. Whatever it may be, this is the length of time for camp. Now, if this was from the 11th through the 15th every day, eight to three, great. We're done, we can move on. But let's say that this, it's the 11th is the first day and the 15th is the last day, but it's not every day from the 11th through the 15th. That's where frequency comes in. So frequency works in a couple different ways. You can create recurring events. So I can create a week, daily, weekly, monthly recurring event. So these three settings will create a separate registration based on my frequency. That's not what I want to do because this camp may be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but I want it as one registration or one sign up. If I did daily, weekly or monthly, it would create a separate event based on that schedule. And that's not what I would want to do. So if I say custom, what this allows me to do is build one registration, but have that registration or that camp multiple days. So this camp isn't really the 11th through the 15th. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, let's say. So I could change this and say, well, the first occurrence is Monday. And then the next occurrence is the Wednesday. So it's the 13th and it's still the same time. I'll say it's eight to three. It doesn't have to be the same time, but I'll say it is. The end is again, it's going to be that day as well. So it's going to be the 13th and it's going to be 3 p.m. And then the last day is going to be the 15th and I can type in here as well if I want. Miss that one. So this configuration again would be if you have one registration. This is a week long camp. It's just not every day of the week. It's the 11th, the 13th and the 15th. That's week one of my camp. So you could use custom frequency if your camp is one sign up, but multiple days throughout that week. If it's just most camps are week long camps where they have it like this 7-11 to 7-15. So that's what we'll use for our example. But keep in mind that that frequency option is there for you to use for that purpose if you have multiple days. Details here, a lot of these items again, this would be where you enter the details about this specific week of camp. So if this was like a themed week of camp, you would put your details about the theme, the age group, you know, information you wanted to portray about this event. Again, standard um, event configuration categories is where this comes into play. So I want to set this in my 2022 category. So I have my 2022 summer camp as category one. Category two and three, this order does not matter. It's not like sub levels, it's just different categories. So this camp, for example, is ages four to six. So I'm also gonna put this in my four to six category. I have upsell. So if I wanna upsell, maybe I wanna upsell my 
my another category, my 2022 camp. And what upsell will do is present my events in the, this category to the user. So before they're done registering, it says, hey, do you want to add any other camps to your shopping cart while you're checking out? And that's always a good idea. So I'm going to put this event in summer camp, 2022 summer camp. I'm going to put it in 2022 summer camp ages four to six. So it's in both of those categories. And I'm also upselling all the events in the summer camp category. So this user is presented with that option to register for multiple camps at once. Online registration details. So again, we're not going to get into every ounce of detail here, but I do want to talk about the cost structures that we see most often for camp. So I'm going to set this just to 1 1 2022 for testing purposes. Um, I'll say, you know, camp, the last day to register is going to be 7 1 2022. Now, for most camps, really all camp, youth camps that we see, it's named registrant because you want the name of the child attending camp. So I'm going to say named registrant. Um, multiple costs comes into play if you want to define registrant types. So this camp, we have ages four to six, right? Well, I could just have single cost and collect the name of the camper, but maybe I want to say specifics here. Maybe I want to say four year old, four year olds, you know, whatever I want. I could put the actual age group of the kids as registrant types, or I could have single cost because I don't need to organize my students by age group. I just want to know that this camp in general is for kids ages four to six. But you have the option using multiple costs if your camp, if you want to designate the specific age group or registrant type, you have that option using multiple costs. Again, I'm kind of going with what I see with most camps. Most camps have age groups, but they don't use registrant types um, at the level. What they do is they use min age, max age. So what this will allow you to do is you can set a minimum and maximum age for your camp attendees. So your camp, you can say the minimum is uh, 48 for my four year olds. Now, if you want to be, you can you can give this some leeway. What this will do is this will calculate based on the date of the event. So this is going to look at 711 and it's going to it's going to make sure that on that date. These kids are a minimum of 48 months and a max of 72. So if you want to play with that a little bit, we have some organizations that do that. Give a little leeway. You certainly can. Now back up to single cost. You know, for example sake, I'll say this is. $225 for this week of camp per kid. Minimum registrants per registration. I usually put one because there's always going to be at least one kid being registered each time someone registered. You can set a max if you see fit, not necessarily um, required. Wait lists. So wait lists are built per event. And if you want to add a wait list on this individual week of camp, you certainly can do so using this waitlist functionality. Of course, we have discounts and late fees. You know about that from other types of calendar activities. I always set for any youth event, I always set do not display telephone or email because anytime an event is a camp registration for any kind of child under 18, I generally don't ask for their email or telephone. We don't generally don't see that. So I'm going to say do not display email and telephone. So right now I'm collecting the names of each camper. It's $225 per kid. I set it to a minimum of one per registration. The wait list is at five. So once my capacity right here is reached, so I'll say this camp has a max of 25 people. Once that capacity is reached, they can add five to the waitlist total. The minimum age is 48 months at the time of the event, and the max age is 72. And again, I set this to do not display uh, email or telephone. Everything else down here, I mean, pretty standard settings. Receipt confirmation message. A lot of times with camp, you see in this field arrival and departure information. So where to drop off the kid, where to pick them up, time requirements, things like that. Always put a cancellation policy. I always harp on this for chargebacks and things like that. Make sure you always enter a cancellation policy. 
Log on sign on prompt. If you are a membership based organization, always require or make log on optional because almost always when a membership organization has a camp, there is a member discount. So remember to always make it required or optional for log on so your members will get their member benefits. Ticketing is not applicable for a multiple day event like this, so we're not going to worry about it. Um, we have payment details, so we have payment type, you know, for example, sake, I'll just say pay online only. All important um, deposit payments into, so you really should have a specific account for your summer camp. Um, most, most people watching this will know that you have to designate your funds into a specific account for reconciliation purposes, so make sure that um, is always set. Scanning back up through here, I always look at my registration begin and end dates, um, make sure those make sense. I got my categories set. Um, anything description wise, details, make sure that's all pretty. I'm going to go ahead and save this. So now what you'll see here is under my summer camp category, here's my summer camp week one that I built. So if I select this event, here's kind of my general dashboard for this event. So I have this event, it's pretty basic, right? I'm collecting the names, I have an age requirement, but I really need to collect more information than that. And that's really where forms come in. So this is not a training on forms. We will also have uh, trainings on building forms and camp forms, but there are very important aspects to how you attach a form that affects user experience and user experiences so important. So I kind of want to talk about forms, how to attach them and how that works best for your users. So let's go take a look at a couple forms. So the forms I have, and I've built a couple other examples here for us to look at later. I've built a couple forms that I want to talk about. So if I go to my forms tab in event management and there's a bunch of forms in here, but the ones that I've built are these 2022 camper info and camp waivers. So I have this camper info form. Let's take a look at this. This is a very brief form that collects T-shirt size and dietary um, and special needs. So there's multiple ways to attach forms to events in Double Knot. You can attach a form required once overall. You can attach a form per person. You can attach a form per person and per type of person. So if you have an event where you collect adults and youth. You can collect a form and assign it and say, I only want the youth to fill out this form, or I only want the four-year-olds to fill out this form. So you can break it down to a pretty minute level. For, for what I've done today, I've built these two forms. And the reason I've done that is to kind of show your options with assigning forms. So the second form I built is this waiver form. And we see this a lot with camp registrations. And this waiver form, what this allows you to do is we have a couple like acknowledgements, medical agreement, you know, COVID waivers, that kind of thing. These are general HTML fields with checkbox items where they read it, read an acknowledgement, read a waiver, and then they check off and agree to these items. I've separated these out into two forms for a couple reasons, and that's kind of like UI user experience. So let's go look at that. So if I go to my calendar activity, um, my week one I've built here, and I go to assign forms, let's assign my forms to this event and then go look at what it looks like. So if I go and let's take my 22 camper info and I say assign, and then I'm gonna take my other one, my waivers, and let's assign that. So what I'm gonna do for the camper info is I'm gonna mark this as required. Um, I'm also going to mark it as each registrant. So what that means is that, so for example, if they have two kids, uh, a parent's coming out and registering their child and their child's best friend, or their two, their two children for one camp, I want this form filled out. It's required, but it's also required per camper that they sign up. I'm also going to check this box display as registrant attributes. And I'll talk more about this in a moment. But what this does is this not only makes it required per camper, but it displays it where we call the registrant attribute page. The camp waiver form 
I'm going to make this just required. I could make this each registrant, but this I'm going to say I just need this filled out once per registration. Um, for example's sake, you know, it's it's a waiver. I don't care if they sign up two kids. It's the same waiver. The parent can sign it for both of them at the same time. So I'm just going to mark this required before adding registrants is literally before providing any registrant information that's rarely used. I do see it used when you have certain requirements for an event and you want to make it very clear that these people should only be coming to this event if they meet certain requirements, then you can add a form before even adding registrants. So let's go ahead and leave this as is and let's get a visual kind of on where we're at with this event at this point. So I'm going to take this event URL and I'm going to go to a window where I'm not logged into double knot and I'm going to manipulate this URL because I'm in our demo system. So this is my camp my bland registration page, but let's get into the details of the registration. So this here is because I set this to optional log on and remember that's very important. If you are having a calendar activity where you have a member discount, you always want to prompt for log on. If I say continue as a guest. I'm going to get to the registrant page. So here you'll notice how many minimum of one. So when I set up the event, I set a minimum of one regist registrant. That way it shows up and it asks right away for this information. If you want, you can add more custom text on this page. So if I wanted to, I have this participant instructions field. And if you want to add custom instruction, about the camp, about who signs up, whatever you want, you can put custom text, which will then appear right above this how many page. So for here, I'll say this is Fred Camper, and this will be age enforced. So if I if I mess up the age, it's gonna tell me, you know, go ahead and lie and tell us of this information. So I'll say 2017. T-shirt, I build again, that's the t-shirt form where I collect t-shirt information. Please list and describe any allergies or special needs. So you'll, if you remember when I attached the form, I said I was going to come back to something. And this is what it means to display a form as registrant attributes. So I'm going to bounce back and bounce back and forth a little bit between where I'm logged in as an administrator and where and the end user registers. But when you remember when I assigned forms, I marked this as each registrant and display as registrant attributes. And that is what forced this form data to appear as a registrant attribute under that camper's name. So if I click continue here, I will then get to my uh, form page where here's my um, waiver form, you know, maybe my COVID waiver, my media waiver, you know, whatever it is. And then I can continue. And what we'll see here is my shopping cart page. So here's my summer camp week one, ages four to six, Fred Camper, 225. Uh, the member discount, they can look up and get their member discount if they didn't log in, my discount code. So that is where, um, you know, you can check out. Here's my integrated donation, I'll say no thanks. Here is my upsell. So if you remember, I set my categories and I set my upsell categories. So now I'm prompting this person to add another camp to their cart. So this is very useful for summer camp because again, if you know that people are likely to register for more than one week of camp, or maybe they have another child in another age group, what this will do is this will allow them to register for another camp in one purchase, in one checkout. So it's a very useful, important function for camp registration using calendar activities. So they can say go back, proceed to checkout or add to cart. If they add to cart, then they add another registration to their cart. And again, they can check out and pay for both of those at once. So the key to those forms again is, I always harp on this as user experience, always test this stuff because, you know, you may see one thing visually when you're building a form and it may look OK. And then when you see it within the UI and the application, it may look funny or may look out of place. And people are fickle and they bail out of registrations quickly. So it's very important to make sure that you're not redundant. You're not collecting duplicate info. You know, don't collect named registrant and then ask for the camper's name on the form, things like that. 
So very important to build your forms correctly, attach them correctly, and then test the way it look and looks and feels to your users because that stuff is so important. So kind of next kind of polishing up this event, let's talk about payment schedules because that's an important feature for uh, camp events or any real event that has a dollar amount where you don't want people to pay the full fee up front. So once you're at your calendar activity kind of uh, page here, your management page, there is an option to the left uh, called payment schedules. So payment schedules really have, you can really dive deep on, on payment schedules. The first option is, is it fixed days or do you wanna say days from the date of registration or activity? I like to choose this second option. And the reason is, is that I know I'm gonna use this as my template. And when I copy this event, this is going to come into play and I'll show you why in a moment. So if I say add schedule item one, I can build a payment schedule and that payment schedule can be an amount. It can be a percentage. It can be an amount per registration, per person, a lot of options. So most, most, you know, over 80% have a basic deposit. It's either a deposit per person um, or an overall percentage deposit. So what I'll say is, I'm going to say this is my deposit, and I'm going to say I want 50% uh, of the total balance due, and I'm going to click this at registration. If I say add schedule item two, I could say, you know what, I want, um, I'm going to call this payment one. And again, you can experiment with these, save it, and see what it looks like, test it out to make sure it's functioning the way you want, but I'll say, you know, I want 25% of the registration. Um, and I want that, you know, 21 days, three weeks before the day of the activity. And if you don't pay that, I'm going to hit you with a late fee. So you can do, I can see, I'm going to hit them with a $10 late fee per person if they don't pay 25% of the fee three weeks before the activity. You, so this is how you can kind of get pretty in depth with some of these payment schedules. Not a lot of our organizations penalize people if they don't meet um, a camp registration fee. We see this a lot for dues, like if there's a yearly dues or something where there's a large payment towards an event registration, it's possible, but that functionality does exist within the system. Lastly, what I'm going to do is just select the balance due. So I'll say, you know, final payment or something like that. The system knows once you select balance due, it knows it has to calculate the full amount. So you don't need to put anything. All you have to do here is say, when do you want it? And I'll say seven days before activity. So before I save this, the reason I chose this is because if I chose fixed dates, every time I copied for week two, week three, week four. If I said fixed dates, I'd have to come in here and edit the payment schedule for each event. If I just say days, it's going to know, well, 21 days before, doesn't matter what the camp date is. I know what that is because it's days from the date of registration instead of fixed dates. So that's something that can save you a little bit of time. So if I say save here, what you'll see now is here's my payment schedule. So I got a deposit of 50% at registration. Payment one is 25% of the total registration, 21 days before the activity. Otherwise you get hit with a $10 late fee per person. And then the final payment is due seven days before the activity. Now, once you have a payment schedule, you have the ability to send payment notifications. And again, this is stuff that's very relevant to camp registrations. So again, once you have a payment schedule, the system knows when you want to collect payment and therefore you can build, you can enable notifications. So there's documentation specifically on payment notifications in the user manual, but what you can do is enable reminders. This date range is based off the dates that you set on your payment schedule, so you should know them. So for example, 21 days before the registration is my first day. And then seven days before, well, the first one is, of course, at registration, but payment one is 21 days before the, the day of the event. And then the final payment is a week before the event. 
So this date range is from those dates. So maybe you want to say it's seven days before the first payment due date and then send my late reminder seven days after and send it every three days between those dates. You also can have custom payment reminders. Again, that's in the user manual for payment notifications. So I'm not going to get into all of those details, but payment notifications are a very useful tool for camp registration. Once you, again, once you have a payment schedule, you can enable notifications. People can also opt in for auto payment. So once you have a payment schedule, not only can you schedule reminders, but the user themselves themselves can also sign up for automatic um, billing, automatically bill uh, their credit card, their account uh, when the payment is due. Okay, let's talk about discounts. So a lot of times for discounts, you know, the most common we see is a member discount. I'm not going to get into specifically member discounts because people with the membership module should be familiar with building a membership discount. What we do see very often is like scholarship discounts for camp events. So, you know, parents will apply for a scholarship and the organization will then hand out a discount code to that parent um, if their scholarship was approved or selected or whatnot. So if we go to discounts here to the lower left, a good example for a scholarship discount, if I wanted to say new discount, I could add in this discount is active, of course, and I'll say, um, Not based on registered info, I'm just going to give a 25% off financial aid discount code to this person. So I'll say JJ25 is the discount code. And so this discount code can then be given out to that person that received financial aid or a scholarship. You also have functionality in here for um, multiple uh, multiple registrant discounts. So if you want to do ratio based discounts. We do have discounts based on the number of camps people sign up for. If that is your camp, if that's your camp setup, for example, if you say if you register for three weeks, you get a discount. Stay tuned for the program uh, video. We'll detail that in the program video. But there are a variety of discounts that you can set up for summer camp. Again, the most common we see are member discounts. We see scholarship discounts. And for a program, we see multiple week discounts. So those all can be set up um, in the discounts module, member discounts, of course, and membership management. So what I like to do, as I said in the beginning, is really focus on setting up one event as my example. So I kind of set up this summer camp week one. And so I always tell clients when training them and the implementation is use this as your example. Set up one event, perfect it, test it out, send it to your colleagues, test, test, test. We cannot stress that enough. Go through and make sure everything is buttoned up. Make sure your description is set, your, your, your address information, your cancellation, receipt confirmation. Make sure your form data is all correct, your payment schedules, your discounts, everything is buttoned up. Once that's completed, you can use the copy function. So this is going to serve as my template. It's perfect. All I need to do now is use this as a template and build out all the rest of the weeks of my camp. So what I mean by that is I can say, you know, I want to copy this text right here and I'm going to go to the lower left and I'm going to select copy. And now the description is I'm going to paste this in, but I'm going to change this to week two. I have the option. Do you want to copy the discounts? Do you want to copy the forms, the notifications, the payment schedules? Yeah, I want to copy all that to my second week of camp. Um, test mode is on by default, and that's a good thing because if it's live, you don't want people to see it before you make any changes. So I'm going to click copy, and once I click close here, I'm landing on my new event, so my summer camp week two. So the process here is once I land on this page, I immediately go to edit, and I edit any applicable settings. So the first one, of course, is going to be the date. 
So I can come here and say, well, this is the next week. This is week two. So I can come in here and say that it's the 18th to the 22nd. Again, I can change. Maybe I want to change the registration end date. Maybe I want to extend that a week for this camp. So I can do that. Registration ends on 7-8. Maybe this week has room for 30 people. You know, whatever it is. You can make any changes you want for week two of camp. So I can come down here and click save. And now week two is done. So I can say, OK, let's go ahead and copy. Let's do week three. So I can come here and I can say mm, week three. I can turn test mode on or off, which I think I forgot to turn it off for week two. So you caught me there. So if I come here, I can again just change my dates. So I can say the 25th to the 29th. And if I want to change my reg end date, again, maybe extend it. I can do that and I can click save. So now that we have some example events built, you'll see here my categories. So my four to six, here are some I built earlier, some different camps. What I did here is I put the kind of the theme in the heading. So I didn't put week one, two, three. I put art of fun, history experts. A lot of organizations will do that. They'll put the theme in the actual name of the event. So if I go to um, this category, this is the first view for category. So I can come here and say, show me all my 2022 summer camps. It's also very important for reporting purposes. So if I say report multiple, I can run by category, which is really important because you can say, you know what, I need to run reports across all my four to six year olds camp, summer camps. And you can come here and then run reports across all those events in that category. Where it really comes into play, I think, is in the presentation to your clients, your customers. So how this works is there's a variety of ways to present events to your customers. So from your website, they can go to your calendar. So you can present a link to your double knot calendar and you can have that on your website and they can go and search for events. That's not usually how summer camp works. Summer camp's usually highly anticipated and usually organizations will directly contact customers. They'll send emails, they'll put a link on right on their front page. So this comes back to those categories. So if I go to utilities, I believe the best way to present these events to your customers is using a category URL. So if I go to manage categories, again, I can pick, because I set them in multiple categories, I can pick. So maybe on the front page of my website, I use, you know, register for summer camp and I link to this category. So if I edit this, there is a category URL. And this category URL, let me let me cancel out of here really quick. Hold on. Cancel this. This category URL will go to. This really quick. This category URL will go to a page which will list every single one of my camps, have the date, the time, and the space available. And the peer person can then jump off and register right from here. So these URLs are very useful because after the date passes, they're automatically removed. The information, every inform ounce of info they need is listed here. If you put a description, it would be listed. It would be available for that person right here. Also, if they're if they're shopping, if they're registering and they say keep shopping, it's going to return them right to this page. And the benefit of that again is they can register for another week of camp. So if they're registering their son and they didn't use the option for, um, if they didn't do the upsell, they could say keep shopping and they could come back to this page and add another camp to their shopping cart. So this is the summer camp category, but if you wanted to break it down by age group, you can do that too. We have a lot of clients that will have a dedicated page on their website for summer camp, and you can use these links, the four to six, seven to 10, so a parent can say, I don't care about all the summer camps, I just wanna see the applicable ones. I wanna see the ones for my kid because my kid's five years old. They can just click on the link for the four to six year old camps. So category is super important. Again, let you organize and let you present those in a succinct way to your clients. So again, I we started with 
we started with categories and we kind of end with categories um, because of how important they are visually and for uh, organizational purposes. So that's going to wrap up the calendar activity portion uh, of this of this training series. Again, I we encourage you to watch both videos, programs, and calendar activities, then make a determination on what's best for your organization. By the end of those two videos, you should have a pretty good idea of where you want to go with your build. And we encourage you to reach out to support to get their opinion if you have any questions. And if you do reach out to support, please provide them with details on your events, your pricing, availability, discounts is super important because as you'll see when you see the next video, small details can determine how you go about setting up these events. Thank you everyone for your time. And again, please watch that second uh, program video.